violence in Charlottesville prompting renewed debate over Confederate statues and memorials throughout the nation. I want to discuss this now with senior political commentators Keith Boykin and Alice Stewart and syndicated talk radio host John Fredericks and Ben Shapiro, editor-in-chief of The Daily Wire and the former editor-at-large at Breitbart. Uh, I'm so glad to have uh, all of you on tonight. John, I'm going to start with you. Uh, uh, John, thank you. Uh, today, the president tweeted about removing these Confederate statues uh, from the U.S., saying that um, it is sad to see the history and culture of our great country ripped apart. Are you with the president on this? Look, Don, the statues represent a history in America that you can't whitewash. President Obama said he wanted to transform America by changing its history. He can't do that. But the real issue is not the statues, Don. It's not about the Confederacy. The real issue with the people that want the statues because they see their jobs going away, they see that, that urban America has basically taken them for granted, and they're taking away their jobs, they're taking away their culture, they're taking away their, their sons and daughters staying in towns. I just got back from... But aren't, uh, what, what, just, what, what, wait, 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 just, what you're I, describing I now, from, but actually, hold on. What you're describing now is racism. This is, this is not racism. Is that it's, not what... It's, uh, econ it's economics. Now. It's got nothing to do you with said, You said that urban people are taking away urban their jobs. Urban people are taking... The, the elites in Washington do not represent rural America, people that have lost their jobs. What does that have to do with the statue, John? Because the statues are a symbol of something they're clinging to because they're tired of the political correctness and the Washington... Elites. I just I just took Amtrak here from uh, Utica, New York, Don. I, I passed. Wait, wait. I passed in four blocks, Don. I passed 27 shuttered factories. These are the real statues of America that are gone away. <laughs> what are you I'm, I'm trying to go. About? I'm trying what to go. What are you with talking you? about? I have no you guys idea. want to change the debate to some kind of confederacy? It has nothing to do with confederacy, Keith. People want their okay, jobs let him talk. back, and let they him want talk. economic Then why isn't the president talking about that instead of statues? The president understands that rural Americans have been sold out <laughs> but rural by Americans, the elites in but Washington. Rural, uh, oh, the, my the, gosh. Rural the part of rural America is uh, in the north, in the west, and whatever. It has nothing to do That's with right. the Confederate does, statues. Well, you know what? But he's not talking about it. He's, he's talking about statues. Statues are a symbol <laughs> for people that want economic justice back, and they want their jobs back. All right, back. that is a stretch. Was that a talking point? Come on, No, Don, Don that's... that's I, look, I, Don, I'm trying to Don, follow him. I don't get look, it. Don, I talk to real okay, Americans. I know, but there are other people. Every, every, there are other... But that, that statute, but then... It's got, it's got nothing then, to do with then, Robert listen, With Lee, all due respect, the, those people don't know the history of the statue and why the statue is there. Maybe you, as a radio host, should teach them that when they call, rather than just listening to them, uh, ha rather than having listening to... Uh, um, a, a whitewash history of what those statues represent. Wow. What those statues represent right now to people are that doesn't make it right. Their history. I'm not saying it makes it right, but everything. But then, everything. Then educate everything. them and tell them that's what Look, we're here Don, tonight. All right, Don, but let, let well, the other panelists stand. Why are so many people in New York and New Jersey concerned about these statues? They have not to do with the Confederacy. It's not just New York and New Jersey. Like, ben, I'm sorry. Hold on, Ben. I want. I want you. Go ahead, Ben. Please. Well, I mean, first of all, I'm just confused at this point. I really about. don't understand what this has to do with economics, per se, because it actually does cross some economic lines. I think that there have been decent arguments expressed for not taking down the statues by people like Condoleezza Rice, who have said that it's a good reminder of our history, that it's an opportunity to teach people when you walk by these statues about the darkness of some of our history. I've heard the argument that I think is at least partially correct, that there's a slippery slope, that uh, if you remove some statues, what's the limiting principle? Where do you draw the line. And you saw today there was a commentator on CNN who said that we should pull down statues of Washington and Jefferson. You know, I, I thought that that was an overreach by President Trump, but clearly it wasn't if people on the left are actually suggesting that. Uh, but I think there are great arguments for taking the statues down. But here's my problem. I think that this is an issue of local control. I think a lot of these towns are already looking into taking down these statues. And mm -hmm. what you're seeing is a lot of people on all sides of the political aisle basically grabbing hold of this issue in order to politicize it. So yeah. I think that you have some folks on the left who are suggesting that everyone who supports retaining the Confederate statues is a racist. I think you have some people on the right who are suggesting that everyone who says that they should come down is a nut job who wants to take down statues of Washington and Jefferson. And I think you have President Trump 
who, who's taking advantage of the situation in order to misdirect away from the press conferences that we saw earlier. But I think in order, listen, to Condoleezza Rice's point, what Ben just said, I think that there is some truth to that. But the problem is that people then revere and they're taught a false history of what those statues mean. mean. And the best way to do it is to put them in a museum where you can go there and actually learn. Someone can put it on tape or whatever. You can have an instructor say, this is uh, Robert E. Lee. Here's what he did. Here's his history. This is what has been said and written about him, rather than just having someone and a whole group of racist people revere a figure that, um, and a history of a figure that's not necessarily true. Look, I think Ben hit on a, a, the great, a perfect point here, is that this is about, uh, this is a local issue. In the South, I view uh, historical issues much differently than those in the North. Growing up in Atlanta, I'm very familiar with the, the racial issue and the, the slaves and, and that part of our history, but it is a part of our history. And there needs to be a way we can preserve our history without uh, hurting people or without people feeling uncomfortable. I saw you raise the Confederate flag at the be beginning of the show. I've been through South Carolina hundreds of times in my life, and now we understand how that is harmful to people and hurtful to people, and we need to take that into consideration. But at the same time, this is not something for the president to do a full uh, uh, swoop across the board. This is a local issue. It needs to be decided. Let, on me, the local let, me, let me give you, let me give you, this is a stark example, and pardon me for uh, my clumsiness here, but just imagine uh, there are people, if someone wanted to erect uh, or, or I have a school called um, the Osama bin Laden Middle School for Learning, whatever, and someone wanted to put that up. Well, that's, what, not, what, that's not part of America. But, so, but, uh, that, but that for African Americans, Robert E. Lee, that represents Robert E. Lee. This was our Holocaust, right? right. This, is, this is what happened to us. We would rather not go to schools. We're not saying that r people shouldn't learn about Robert E. Lee. We not, we're not saying that Robert E. Lee, uh, Robert e. Lee's statue should not exist in some form somewhere, but it should not be part of a public building, a building especially something that is paid for with federal tax dollars. If you want to have it in the privacy of your home, have as many Robert E. Lee statues as, as you want. If you want the implication, I, but, just, I do have but, to ask you, but, is the implication here that everyone who opposes taking down the statues is a racist? No, or no, that's not what I, I said. Mean, that, I'm not saying that at all. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that we should have a conversation just like we have now, and I don't think that at all. I'm just trying to get you and others to understand how people of color feel about those statues. Oh, no, I fully understand that. If I were a black taxpayer, I wouldn't want to pay for the, the upkeep on these statues either. Yeah. I mean, I get it. I, I totally get that. And, and listen, I, I all I'm saying is that it's a local issue. I think I'm the only person on the left, on the so-called left, who hasn't spoken tonight about yeah. this. Uh, first of all, with respect to Alice and John and everyone, this is not a local issue. This is an issue about America's history and national history that affected millions of Americans. 600,000 people died in the Civil War. It was the bloodiest war in American history. 50,000 people died at Gettysburg, 20,000 at Vicksburg, 20,000 at Antietam. We can't celebrate the history of a man named Robert E. Lee or Jefferson Davis who took up arms against the United States of America. I don't know where everybody else draws the line, but I can draw the line there. You can distinguish. It is very possible to distinguish what Robert E. Lee did and what Jefferson Davis and Stonewall Jackson did from what Thomas Jefferson and George Washington did. George Washington and Thomas Jefferson, though they were slave owners, owners never took up arms against the United States of America. And for That's a president treason. of the, it is, it is treason. And for a president of the United States in 2017 to endorse treasonous, traitorous, murderous, racist, and to celebrate that is unacceptable. And anyone who stands up in favor of that is, in my opinion, is, is not respecting the true culture of what America is supposed to represent. All right, I, I've, right. Got, I've got to get to the break. So, right. But also, we're going to talk about this because a Missouri lawmaker is saying that she hopes Donald Trump is assassinated. So I'm back now with my panel. And yes, we talked about all of this during the break, <laughs> uh, all of us here. But I want to move on now and talk about a Democratic Missouri uh, State Senator uh, from the University City posted that this is in St. Louis posted and then quickly deleted this Facebook thing saying um, she hoped that President Trump would be assassinated. Uh, Senator Marie Chappelle Nadal, she came to prominence during uh, the whole Ferguson and Michael Brown uh, situation. Um, she quickly took, took it down. Uh, the U.S. Secret Service and St. Louis, in the St. Louis field office investigating and both Senator Claire McCaskill and the chairman of the Missouri Democratic Party have called on her to resign. What do you say? And there's no excuse for that. There's no reason for that. Um, clearly, this is an emotional issue. Clearly, um, 
when this started over the weekend, we could see things bubbling over. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I think the president from the get-go didn't handle this correctly with regard to not coming out completely unequivocally denouncing hatred and bigotry and racism, and that was he dropped the ball. But it, what that has done, that has created a ripple effect of emotions and conversations and discussions, and this is where we are today. Yeah. Look, the president should own his own words. He's responsible for his words. And she said, um, the way I responded this morning was wrong. She told the Star, I guess the newspaper, I am frustrated. Uh, did I mean the statement? No, I am frustrated. Absolutely. The president is causing damage. He's causing hate. Well, she should be that, responsible for her words like well, the president's responsible. Well, at least, words. and I don't, I don't in any way think what she said was right, but at least she had the, the courage to say she was wrong. This president never says he was wrong. This is the president who got up there last year during the campaign. But you're not making excuses for her. I'm either. not making excuses for her, but I'm saying this is the president who got up there last year during the campaign and spoke about Second Amendment remedies in case Hillary Clinton was elected, yeah. which yeah. was a clear threat of assassination. Uh, but I just he never admitted I, he was wrong. I understand that, but this is uh, what about it? I mean, yes, you're right about all that, but and, and, still, but the, she's... No, you're right. It's yeah. wrong. Yeah. You, can't, you can't say anything yeah. other than it's wrong. We can yeah. just end the conversation there. But the point is, yeah. Donald Trump is the president of the United States. He's supposed to be not only the political leader, but also... The moral leader of the, the country. He cannot do that. He can't condemn other people when he's creating the culture of violence himself. Yeah. What do you say to this, Ben? You know, I, I think that when it comes to the culture of violence, this is something where we really have to be careful, and I think we all should agree on this. This is pretty obvious stuff. You don't call for people's assassination. Right. I think that there are groups like Antifa out there that are violent. Forget Charlottesville. They're violent in other places like Sacramento. They've been violent in Berkeley. Violence in, in our political discourse is not a thing that should be happening, nor should it be incited or forwarded. Um, but I think that we have to be very careful about distinguishing between actual insightful language, like what we're talking about here. I mean, the Secret Service is now investigating this, uh, and just nasty language. I think President Trump says some really nasty, terrible things. Um, you know, at the point when he actually calls for violence, I condemned him and I will condemn him again. Uh, I think that in this case, what we're talking about is something m much more explicit than anything Trump has said so far, obviously. Yeah, I I've got to run. I'm sorry. Everyone doesn't get to talk. John, do the segment. You talked a lot last segment. Thank we're you. Good we're good. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. Jobs back. Yeah. Jobs back. Hey, Ben, I loved having you on. Uh, um, and I'd love to have a, a longer, further discussion with you about free speech. I think it's an important topic, an import, important issue that I'd like to uh, unpack with you a little bit longer. And next time you come on, thank great. you all. Thanks, everyone. Uh, that's it for us tonight. Thanks for watching. I'll see you right back here tomorrow. Nice